Welcome. This is St. James Lutheran Church. I am Pastor John Locke. I'm the pastor here at St. James in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Welcome to week two of Lent. This will be the week of March the 1st. This week in our Reflections of the Heart theme, we are talking about sharing our hearts. You know, some of the hardest parts of growing up is learning how to share. We spend countless efforts telling our children when they're 2, 3, 4, when they're 11, 12, 13, or 22, 23, 24, or constantly telling and reminding us that we are supposed to share things with one another. But I know and remember from my own children and my grandchildren how trying to get them to understand at a very early age that it is okay to share that favorite toy or that favorite book or the thing that you're playing with with somebody else can be a good thing. It may be a hard thing, but it's so very difficult for us to learn to share. You know, that carries over from things to our own emotional heart too, doesn't it? When we begin to start having close relationships with other people, particularly outside of our families, we grow up and we find someone that we want to share our time and life with, and we explore uh, relationships, we, we take on a risk when we do that. Early on, when we're first encountering these relationships in our, in our growing up, we may not think about the risk until it's already happened. We do have to take a risk in order to love and be loved. We take on the risk of being hurt, being rejected, having our hearts broken. Sometimes it results in those things, and, and, a, and a broken heart in a relationship can almost be unbearable. It can take a long time to heal from a broken and wounded heart. It's happened to me. It's happened to most all of you that are watching. It's happened to our children. We can't always stop it from happening, can we? It's part of the process of growing up, I think, and maturing, becoming a wiser person. Now, in our story this week for our devotionals, Illustrated Ministry has chosen the story of Mary and Joseph and their community and their family traveling to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover, and Jesus is with them. And in the midst of that story, what we see is the experience, particularly of Mary, of understanding that she has to now share Jesus, her child, with the rest of the world, with all of creation. Now, there's a lot of different directions that we can go in our conversations, and there's many different questions in the study guides and the devotional materials that can help you talking about different types of topics with your family and your children. And I'm not going to try and confuse you with another option necessarily. But I do want to remind us of one thing. To what we give, or to whom we give, our hearts is important. Because when we give our heart, when we open our hearts up for other people to be a part of, we really should expect that thing or that situation or that person to make us stronger to make us better, to make us happier, to fulfill us in some way. Now, I'm thinking that our relationship with Jesus is like that. Jesus doesn't force us to love him. God never says, you shall love me, period. You have to do it. You have no other option. In Jesus' commandment, Jesus says, you shall, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. And you should do that because God loves you first. But God is a God of free will. And God, in loving us, exposes God's heart to us and our capability and our willingness sometimes to turn away from God 
to ignore God's heart, to hurt God's heart. When we open ourselves in this relationship with God, we are opening ourselves to a lot of things that Jesus, the Spirit, God the Father, that will be asked of us because it makes us a stronger and better person. It makes us a better disciple. We'll be asked to take risks. We'll be asked to give, to learn, to share, to forgive, to love. Our part of that relationship and that loving is going to be filled with failure. We all fall short, don't we? We are sinful, we are unclean, we will fall short of the glory of God and God's righteousness. But on God's side, from God's side of the relationship, God's heart is one where love is unconditional, where grace abounds, where God's promise to us is to always be present. At baptism, we are marked with the sign of the cross. A couple of weeks ago, you probably participated in Ash Wednesday devotions and you marked your forehead or someone else did with you and reminded yourself that we are dust and to dust we shall return. And in the middle of those two phrases is that active, working relationship of love that God offers us. It's a love that God gives at a great cost. That cost of becoming like us and experiencing all the things that we experience and our frailties and our shortcomings. But it's a gift that God gives to each of us, to you and to me and to all of creation. This gift of love that calls us into a new and deep relationship. It's a love that is grace-filled. It's wondrous. My example this week, my token is a, a, a piece of pottery. It's made by someone in the western part of North Carolina, uh, a good friend of Annalisa and mine's. And she makes these little statuettes of angels. They're all different. She's made, we have several of them. She probably made over 100, and they're all slightly different, but they all have a heart being held close, arms wrapped around it. To me, this signifies the way that the relationship is between God and us. God holding our heart close and tight, encouraging us, empowering us, loving us beyond belief. Blessings to you this week. As you search for the heart of Jesus, as you search for the ways that Jesus holds you close, and may you find ways to share that heart of Jesus with others. Let us pray. Thank you, O oh God, for claiming us and naming us in the waters of baptism, for holding us so close in love and yet with so much freedom to explore, for calling us back, for forgiving us, for never, ever letting us go. Help us in our search for you, your heart, and ways to serve and share that heart of love with others this week. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. God bless you. from east to west and 
and runs as deep as it is wide And you know all our hopes Lord, you know all our fears And words cannot express the love we feel We long for you to hear so listen to our hearts oh And hear our spirits sing, hear sing A song of praise if flows From those you have redeemed And we will use the words we know To tell you what an awesome God but words are not enough to tell you of our love So listen to our hearts And if words could fall like rain From these lips of mine And if I had a thousand years I would still run out of time So if you listen to our hearts Lord, every beat will say Thank you for the life And thank you for the truth And thank you for the way And listen to our hearts And hear our spirits sing A song of praise that flows From those you have redeemed And we will use the words we know To tell you what an awesome God but words are not enough to tell you of our love So listen to our hearts Hear our spirits sing A song of praise that flows From those you have redeemed And we will use the words we know Tell you what an awesome God you are But words are not enough To tell you of our love So listen to our hearts And words are not enough To tell you of our love So listen to 